Welcome back to Life with the Spectrum. I'm Gina Cavalli, and as I've mentioned before, you're on my journey, I'm on your journey. This is a journey of life with the spectrum. And no question is too big or small. I'm not an expert, I'm not a doctor, but I am a mom who gets it. And I've been bringing on great guests that get it too, and many of which are experts, like Angela. Angela, before I mess up your name, how do you pronounce that last name? You're good, Angela Eschbach. It's Angela Eschbach and <laughs> Angela is an ABA therapist, but now has moved on to be a BCBA, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so many questions about ABA therapy for me and my family. It is a game changer. The game, the game, it is every bit worth every bit of money you have to use ABA. So yeah. can you tell me, I know you're a BCBA and we'll get to the differences between a, I guess the therapist part of that, but what is ABA? Yeah, totally. Um, So ABA is Applied Behavioral Analysis, and I know Gina's been talking about this before, Um, but essentially it was a type of theory created by B.F. Skinner, um, and the therapy focuses on focusing on behaviors and how behaviors dictate how we are and how we act. um, Everything's through reinforcement, and so for instance, like I'm reinforced because I love talking to Gina. So I definitely want to be on this podcast. So we work through skill acquisitions, um, increasing skill acquisition and decreasing that behavioral um, incidents that we don't want to see those behaviors we don't want to see. And that's kind of in a quick, easy nutshell, ABA therapy. Um, It focuses on um, evidence-based practices and then the evidence-based practices we're able to see what really works for certain individuals. Mostly ABA is placed with individuals on the spectrum, Um, but it's not limited to, I jokingly will tell people that I use this on my partner all the time. (laughs) And they'll catch me too. They'll be like, I know you're doing your ABA on me. Um, It's true. Wait, wait, it's true because I sat uh, with months and months, years of ABA therapy that I picked up those tricks and trades that were being taught to my son, also being taught to me. And because I'm an adult who can rationalize everything, I use it all the time and I will wait you out. (laughs) (laughs) It's a hard one to wait out too. I know we've worked on that one. It is, yeah. Waiting out and understanding we can even kind of talk. I don't want to get I get a little nerdy about it all because I love it. I think it's so cool. You're but- one of the very best in your field. Angela, I have mentioned you on this podcast before I- that you are money. And I've said it to you a million times when you worked here in our home every day for months after months no. after months no. for hours at a time. I was like, you're money, Angela. Mm-hmm. You are, you don't even know it, how good you are. And so I hope no matter where you go in life, you remember, no matter what you do, you are money. Seriously. <laughs> I really appreciate that. That's super kind. And ABA therapy, you know, it started in our house. Well, let me digress. At what age do you think a child should start getting ABA? Because I know kids as young as two, and I'm like, oh, those behaviors really aren't there yet. But then I noticed my son's behaviors really came out around five. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, the cool thing about spectrum, right, you know, it's all over the place and every individual, I really liked when you talked to the person from Cumberland, she described it as jelly beans and I totally yeah. resonate <laughs> with that, right? right? And it like, like you and me, we're totally different. Um, same with kids on the spectrum. I've worked with kids. So a little bit about me, I've worked from ABA from kids that are two years old, all the way up to 42. Uh, adults. Um, so ABA is at any time, I would say the earlier, the better. And it's not always um, behavioral reduction, sometimes the skill acquisition. And so like paired with speech and paired with occupational therapy, if we're able to do ABA therapy, which I think is kind of that rounded of everything, yeah. um, you're going to get your kid able to step forward and get forward with their abilities um, earlier. And they kind of understand, I think ABA is all about patterns and understanding kind of the pattern of what behavior, what I need to do to get what I want. And if we're able to do that in an early age, you're going to be able to kind of skip out on the behaviors that you face at five and six. Now, not all the behaviors, because we're still working with a, a five-year-old and B, you know, right. I think most, children that, yeah, I mean, and most children that are on the, um, the spectrum are any individual are very spirited people. 
you know? Oh, yeah. And so I think part of that too, is that, you know, you're dealing with um, a very spirited kid that's also five and wants to do what they want to do, you know? So let me ask you a question because I, I, I've reached out to my podcasters and, and the subscribers yeah. and they want to know the same thing. Some kids go and get ABA therapy at a place of business. I, and for my family, thought it was best to bring ABA into the home because for me, the behaviors are happening in the home. It's great when I send my son out because he's like an angel and I'm like, oh, you know, so good. I'm doing such a good job. But then at home, at home, I'm like, who are you, devil child? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but it's true. So what is the difference? How do you recommend ABA therapy? I mean, you've been doing it for years, Angela, so certainly yeah. you know the difference is doing it at home and doing it at a place of business? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think you need to always look at, I think going into a clinic, I was a clinical director for a while and I was in charge of a clinic. And so I really saw in firsthand multiple children coming in, doing that 40 hours a week, which I know when you hear that, you're like, whoo, that's a lot of time. But, but they thinking need it. About that, they need it. And there's reasons behind that and evidence-based reasons behind someone needing 40 hours. But besides that, um, when you go into a clinic, they're able to fully transform the environment, right? I right. can make sure that little sister doesn't come in. I can make sure the dog doesn't park. I can make sure that the vacuum's not going, right? So I can really okay. focus and hone in on those skills and that behavioral reduction. Now, the key is, and that's what I would suggest to all parents, two things. First thing, always do the parent training. Whenever, when you start ABA, parent training is something that you need, because in the end of the day, like, you know, and I love that you're praising your hands, but in the end of the day, you're not going to have the ABA therapist, little fairy around able to help, right? And so we want to make sure that we're doing parent training and knowing, and to me, it's kind of also backtracking that, you know, that they're getting everything that they want and that you want from ABA therapy, because the BCBA will be able to articulate what they're doing. And so, then the second thing, go yeah, ahead, sorry. No, no. So, so, so you believe that going into an office environment is more beneficial than at home? I want to say more beneficial. I think it's all dependent on the kid. Now, you if think you're a working, combination could work. So I would think a combination. And I would think that also you want to do um, a transitional plan, right? So we're okay. in the clinic, in the clinic, in the clinic. And then we're going to do that blend, right? right. Um, and how I usually design my programs, and every BCBA is different, and every BCBA would have a reason, right? But how I would design my program would be, I'm in the clinic with you, doing parent training, you coming in. We're going to move a little less from the clinic and do more parent training and hopefully do some time at home, okay. where I have ABA therapists at home. Then we're going to move a little bit, a lot more parent training and a lot more ABA therapists at home. And then primarily parent training until we're able to discharge. That's and, kind of the dream. And now mm -hmm. discharging. So um, Lyric uh, was discharged. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, he, behaviorally, Angela, the biggest difference, ABA, and I cannot stress this to parents who are having behavioral issues at home. I promise you, you're going to continue to have them until you get ABA and even maybe some during ABA. But after it's all said and done with, those should go away. Now. What if you get to that point where you're on that discharge path and, and the child has had these aha moments? Don't you think that it's okay to revisit some sort of ABA in that person's future? Because yeah. as we develop and change and then hormones, oh my God, the dreaded teenage years are coming up. I mean, like <laughs> different behaviors start coming back into play and they need to be addressed. Yep. Um, I totally agree with that. I think in the end of the day, raising kids is hard, nonetheless, no matter what. And then you add a spectrum to it and it makes it more difficult because also we don't, we can't go back to how we were parent to know, oh, well, my mom did this because we're working with someone that totally thinks differently than we do, which is right. fine. And so finding the experts that understand how they're thinking and processing helps us understand how can I help them best know what the circumstance is? What is the situation? And that's most of the time is that a lot of times these behaviors that we see is lack of communication that they can't tell you why they're mad. And that might be also their emotional intelligence too, of like, 
and I, I don't want to say intelligence in the sense that they don't but their emotional they're delay a, their social emotional yeah. delay of everything sure exactly and being able to process like I'm mad and this is why I feel that and yeah. I mean I would say that most adults that uh, and off of the spectrum you know quote-unquote neurotypical adults still can't have emotional intelligence <laughs> And so we're working on that. Um, right. But yeah, I think, so what you can do and what you can always write up is to um, have ABA services in a consultative, um, as a consultative method. Later down the, the road. Hey, Angela, yeah. I've texted you several times, have yeah. I not? Since, since yeah. we've yeah. discharged, I've said, hey, Angela, yeah. what do I do? Like, how do I, hello? And then you're, and then you always ask me, well, how many times has he been doing this or when does it normally happen? And so that, that ABA immediately kicks in and then I go, okay, I have yeah. to stop and think about it too for a second. Well, and you know, um, I kind of shared with you how right now I'm taking a break from ABA because I'm taking care of my mom yeah. and this has get changed my perspective completely of being a caregiver, right? Oh, yeah. Um, which is great, you know, and, cause I'm not a parent at this point right. and, but knowing like, I mean, God bless everyone that's a parent, first off, <laughs> but being a caregiver, how it consumes like the appointments and then this, and then, you know, the sleepless nights it's, and everything like that. Yeah. Your brain it's, doesn't function as quickly you're, anymore. You're you know? tired by the end of the day. Yeah. So Angela, let me ask you a question and not to take away from your caregiving at the moment. I, oh, I, God, know, I know that how hard that is. Um, mm -hmm. So when I was with you, we had a team mm -hmm. of ladies. We had, mm -hmm. we had teams of people. I had Polly and I had Samantha and I had all these people. And then I had you and I had Ashley and mm -hmm. Ashley at the time was the BCBA. Mm -hmm. What exactly mm -hmm. is the difference between an ABA therapist and the BCBA? Like, can you explain totally. for people who are just starting their journey here? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, um, the ABA therapist is pretty much the people, um, on the floor implementing the programs, kind of they're in session every time with your child right so that's okay. a they're called an rbt now when okay. i was there they didn't have the special terminology so that's a registered behavioral technician gotcha. um, this person has gone through training has a little bit of education um not like they could have a bachelor's or a high school degree um but they have to have 40 hours to um get this certification right 40 okay. hours specifically national nationwide these are the people that come in and implement the programs. The BCBA is the one. So that's a um, board certified behavioral analyst. That's they what have you to are. Go through, that's what I am. Yeah. yeah. And you have to go through. Um, so like the RBT and then the BCBA. So the BCBA is their supervisor. Um, you have to go, you have to get a master's, have to do a certain amount of credits, experience, and pretty intensive tests and credentialing. Once you're there, you're creating the programs, right? So when we were kind of when you're referring to when I was the RBT and Ashley was the BCBA, she was creating the programs in which I was implementing, kind of making that game plan for us. Okay. For, for my son, like, okay, we exactly. need to do this, this, and this, and this. And yep. then I would come and go, Hey, can we work on buttons and zippers? Because I am taking for granted the fact that I'm his mom and I can't get him to do this. Yeah, and then yeah, we yeah. started working and slowly but surely, you know, he still doesn't have it, by the way. <laughs> it's practicing. You know it's what? It's a, it's a tricky thing. Fine motor is tricky, honestly. Um, but yeah, no. So yeah. So then the BCBA is the one making the game plan, right? Um, and they're also the ones doing parent training with you. And so not until I was a BCBA, I wasn't doing the parent training with you. And parent training is for, you know, people new to the ABA world is um, a devoted hour just to work on skills with the parents. So yes. that might be learning the functions of behavior. And so- um, Talk about and, those, the functions yeah, of behavior. There's five of them, correct? Uh, it's four, but you're- Four. Uh, I'll go, well, I'm a four, fifth. <laughs> no, okay. um, and you know, it's funny because I was just so excited when you first asked me about ABA. I'm so excited like, you're still here. Function, that I gotta do this, gotta do this. Okay, but, um, talk so about functions. functions. So um, B.F. Skinner was the one that, the theorist that created behavioralism, which is what we do our practice through. He came up with four functions of behavior. So the four functions of behavior is attention. I'm doing this for attention. I'm trying, I'm screaming really loud. I kind of 
um, emphasis with mommy, mom, 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 mommy, mom, mom. I'm trying to get your attention, right? So the yeah. behavior that I'm implementing is to get your attention. The second one is denied access. I'm mad because you took my iPad away. So I'm going to exhibit behavior, maybe pouting, maybe hitting, anything Meltdown, like that. Meltdown, central. Meltdown. Yeah, exactly. It's denied access. The third one is escape. I'm trying to get out of doing something I don't want to do. Elopement. Uh, <laughs> yeah, elopement. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, elopement and, you know, tan temper tantrums. Honestly, property destruction, there's a lot that could be with escape. But even for me, right, sometimes I escape from doing work by putting cleaning up my house. That's so an escape maintaining function. <laughs> a lot a lot of children end up falling to the floor and won't move. It's like they, they become yeah. a dead weight. Because they just exactly. they're trying to escape whatever it is uh -huh. you're putting on them. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Exactly. No, 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 that's a great example. And the last one's automatic. I do it because it feels good. So my behavior of like twirling my hair, I'm not doing it for your attention. I'm not trying to get out of something. I'm just doing it because it feels good to me. Um okay. so that happens a lot. Um, kind of, you know, what people have labeled as like stimming or um vocal stereotypy, kind of repeating the same like thing. Like echolalia. Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. All of that, that's usually in that kind of um, automatic. So what happens with like behavioral therapy, we figure out that function. Why are they exhibiting these behaviors? And the big question is why? So why, are, why am I falling on the ground? And that's why, you know, when you're telling me, you text me about questions, I'm like, okay, well, tell me more about what's going on. Because yeah. you get to figure out that why. Once you know the why, you know what to do. Um, and so that's a great thing about parent training when it comes to ABA is that, you figure out how to be those detectives of figuring out what is my why? Why is my kid doing this? And then what can I do next for them? Right. Um, and how we react and what I tell everyone, because I know being a caregiver of an individual with autism is super hard, but what um, you can do is always control what your reaction is. And that usually determines the outcome. Yes. So, which is easier said than done and sometimes I that. no sometimes, yeah, sometimes, it sometimes it is sometimes you want to rage sometimes you want to be very sweet and loving and sometimes yeah. you're just like i'm checked out i can't do yeah, it anymore hard. yeah it's, it's hard i don't want to do that you know but the um you know we talked about this the more consistent we are with our reactions so i know the why they fall to the ground whenever i present um homework I know that I need to follow through and make sure that they do their homework. Right. Because then they understand that pattern that I talked about before. Right. I understand. Okay. Once I fall on the ground, mom's still going to make me do my work. So I'm going to stop falling on the ground and we'll replace it with positive reinforcement, things that they like to do. Right. Yeah. So I then agree. if I know all of a sudden they like stickers, when they're sitting in that chair, I'm going to load them up on stickers. Well, I love how you're sitting in that chair. You are amazing. Great job sitting in the chair. Yes. And that's what ABA does. Um, you know, yeah, positive I reinforcement to... is so crucial to anything, yeah. not just to children on the spectrum, but to people in general. People yep. want to hear that they're doing a good job. People want to be praised for the smallest of things. Um, even, even in like the professional world I'm in, you know, when you hear you're so great and you're, you're so good, it just makes you feel, and it takes a little extra pep in the step and it mm -hmm. happens to children as well. It gives them a little yeah. extra. Oh yeah. I love that. So Angela, really quick. When I asked you to be on the show, you had said, Oh, I need to hit this, 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 and this. What are some of the other things you want to hit? I want the okay. most that I can get from you. And I'm bringing yeah. you back on because I think you're money. I think you're great. So tell oh, me what else. <laughs> um, I want to address real quick. I know that ABA gets a bad rap. How? I, had this, I, I know. Well, a lot of people think back in the 70s and 80s ABA style, right? Where ABA was very much um, taking... And I'm thankful that you've had a great experience, but um, a lot of times people are thinking that we're making little robots through this, of that kind of pattern of behavior, that we're making robots, that we have to do it this way, this way, and this way. But kind of like an IEP is, what we do is we individualize for that individual. Right. Now, you know, of course, an individual with autism is going to have kind of a different life that we than what is like normalized right like they're gonna have more difficulty making friends that's what I 
and kind of going for. Um, but oftentimes what happens is that people think that we're making these robots and that, you know, you need to let them be who they are. We are in ABA, you may let them be who they are, of course, but in society, we have cultural norms, right? We have to do certain things. If I'm running late and I still have a red light, I still have to stop at the red light, even though I don't want to. And so that's kind of how I sometimes put in perspective of ABA is that sometimes we have to do these social norms. And oftentimes you'll see, we talked about positive reinforcement and oftentimes you'll see, oh, thanks for sitting in the chair. Here's a potato chip for the younger kids, right? Yeah, and a sure. lot of times people will associate it with like, oh, it's like I'm training a dog. You think my dog, my kid is a dog. And it's what's reinforcing to them. And we'll eventually take that away but you got to be mindful that we want, you know, an ABA and I speak generally, but my personal experience, you want your kid to be that beautiful, wonderful individual that they are. Are you still with me? I am. Okay, good. All of a sudden my screen you. just popped away. I got, yeah. um, I'll just go off of not seeing you. Um, we want them to be that individual that they are beautifully and wonderfully are, but able to function in a world where they have all these different things coming at them because we can't keep them in a protective bubble for the rest of their life. No, not we at all. Exactly. And so that's what ABA really does for people is help them function in a world to be who they are, but e be able to be successful in the world that they're put in. I look, I look back to one of the earliest, uh, you know, memories of almost ABA for, for Helen Keller. Here she is, oh, yeah. she's, mm -hmm. she's blind and she's deaf. And mm -hmm. she gets a therapist that has to teach her everything because her parents didn't teach her anything. Her parents just let her, you know, roam around the table at, at dinner time and just feast off everything instead of sitting her down and teaching her what a fork was and how to eat properly. Whether she was deaf or blind, it didn't matter. She needed to be taught what words were and there was a way to get it done. And so, yeah, of course, that was a little bit more therapy, but that ABA, man, yeah. you saw it. And, it's and, a and arm, yeah. And, and look at that, that therapist ended up staying with her her entire life. So exactly. Um, well, and what's cool about it is in the end, sorry to interrupt you. But no, like, go ahead. That's preserving their dignity, right? Right. You don't want an individual to be like looked upon and feasting on everything around. You know, we want to make sure that they're able to have the best life that they can have. Right. Yeah. And the way that we can do that is to teach them ways to be themselves but in a safe way in society. Right. And some of the behaviorals are hitting and some of them are, you know, really very hurtful to themselves and to other people. Those need to be nipped mm -hmm. in the bud right away. Mm -hmm. um, we mm -hmm. didn't have that in our instance um, yeah. with ABA therapy. There was never really any hitting or hurting of, uh, of himself or others. It was other behavioral issues that we needed to address. Um, what yeah. are, are some of the other things that were on your list really quick? <laughs> <laughs> if you could think of anything. I was, about that. I was trying to get everything in. Um, so, you know, I talked about how parent training is so important. It is. And knowing the functions. Um, being really mindful to, you know, I love, and I've kind of listened throughout of your podcast because I really um, am happy that you're kind of creating this community. And as a parent, um, things that I've loved is training and parents. Um, but a thing to know is, you got to create a community. You got to know what other parents are, you know, talking about and going through, because if you're trying to do it on your own, you're going to have a really hard time. And so I really want to emphasize for parents to be able to build a support system of like, of people that understand. Um, I used and, to do like, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, I, and I think it's really important to, um, Everybody has a different experience. Everybody has a different child. Everybody has a different young adult uh, on the spectrum. And we're all living life with the spectrum. We are not on the spectrum, but somebody we're living with is. Yep. And when I started this, I had so many people coming to me. When are you going to do this? When are you going to do this? And I, and I thought for the longest time I'd be exploiting my son and my family. And I didn't want, I, I had big reservation about that. And, you know, I'm already a broadcaster and exploit my own self. So <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I want to do is put everything else, like my stuff in the street, so to speak. Yeah. But but everybody has a different story to tell. Um, my girlfriend Mia was on, her son has auditory processing. Mm -hmm. And 
she went through some ABA too, and she went through different types of therapy therapies, and she's waiting them out and slowing everything down so that they can see how she's speaking. Uh, that's important. So that's why I started this is because everybody does have a different story and not every autistic person is the same. Some might be brilliant over here and lack over here. Yep. You know, you hope for the nonverbal kids that they want, you know, become verbal and they have yep. their own story to share. Exactly. Or some form of communication, right? Like right. Um, iPads. You know, and, um, exactly. Any, and that's the, you know, biggest thing to always remember. And, um, when we're working with our individuals is, and I know most parents do like take some time to get into their shoe. Um, I remember I did a college course, um, and this was actually just in development. Right. And we had to put our hands up in the air for, I would say it was five minutes. So our shoulders Ooh. were hurting. Everything's hurting. Were hurt, right. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to go to the gym from this. But what he was <laughs> trying to express was now imagine you're a two-year-old walking through the mall, holding mom and dad's hand, and they're pulling you through and walking really fast. And that was the most empathetic thought time that I had of like, well, of course they're exhausted. Our feet are not the same length. Um, my strides are longer. My arms are up. So I'm probably going to have a tantrum because I'm hurting, right? Yeah. And so, you know, kind of having those moments of stepping back and being like, it's easy to say, oh, you're just doing this because I said no. But, you know, knowing that that's the function, right? But also having the empathy of like, also, you're probably mad because you've been in school all day and now all of a sudden you have to do homework and you're eight and you want to go play outside, of course, you know? Right. Um, so even communicating with them, like, hey, like, I feel you. Let's get our homework done and then we can go outside um because in in whatever way they communicate too right? right um it doesn't have to always be verbally they can point to pictures and so that's why i really think aba is so great because they think of that wide spectrum idea right um, i cannot say en enough good things about aba i often uh called uh all the therapists that came into the house including you um like like autism whispers because <laughs> i i just think that for me and my experience, ABA saved our family in some respects and saved my son from going down a path that I wouldn't have known how to get him back on well, no. the right road. And yeah. um, it was introduced to us at five years old. Uh, I've mm -hmm. seen and heard of children as young as two going through mm -hmm. ABA therapy. Whatever works for your family, whether it's in home, on site, I do believe um, like like you said, though, that and, and take it from me, it works. It works. And yep. I hate to think that there's a negative stigmatism around um, or a stereotype around ABA therapy, because um, once you can get past that first session and that's the hardest one. Yep. OK, I will say and this. We it was the hardest one for me because my my son was screaming and crying for 45 minutes in a corner um, with Angela kind of bear hugging him in a way like where she wasn't touching him per se, but she had a field that he could not like the force field of Angela. <laughs> he could not get out of that force field. And, um, and for 45 minutes, I sat there and I heard him melt down and cry. And it, as a mother, I'm sitting oh. in the other room, like, Oh my God, I'm going to come unglued. <laughs> but, yeah, I know. But it was, all, it was almost like it broke him. So then he was like, okay, this is the way it is. And this is going to be how it's going to be. And I'm not going to, and we had only just a few more meltdowns along the way, but the process got easier. The behaviors got better. The behaviors mm -hmm. eventually went away. And yep. as other behaviors went away, new ones came in and we addressed those along the way too. So, um, Angela, uh, I can't say enough good things. And I don't know. I know once you're done taking care of your mom, you'll get right back to work. I don't know if that in, it means you going back into an actual company or you starting something of your own. But I can tell you this. How can people reach out to you 
um, with questions. Obviously, they can comment right yeah. here, share, like, comment below. I can answer questions or get you in touch with Angela. Angela, how can they get in touch with you if they have direct questions that maybe they feel uncomfortable sharing in a comment section? Yeah, you know what? Um, let me go ahead. Um, I can share my email because okay. for me, honestly, um, this is like a passion of mine to be able to help. Now, I will give you general answers or where to go to find the resources because I won't ever know your kid. And fortunately with ABA, you get a formal evaluation that's specifically for your kid. Um, but I will, I'll do my best to get the resources or I'll tell you the truth that I'm not sure yet. Um, okay. so my, my name is Angela Eschbach. So it's A N G E L A altogether Eschbach, E S C H B A C H at gmail.com. Feel free to reach out to me and I'll try to pull you some resources that I know. Um, yes. I've only worked specifically in Georgia. Um, but fortunately I've worked with people and I, um, have family members that worked at babies can't wait, um, worked with Ava's law program, as well as, um, working with getting laws passed for individuals with different abilities to have the same resources as our neurotypical kids. So I would love to help wherever I can. Um, I, there's so much more to say about the world of disabilities that I would love to share. So I would love can to Can I come have back you on. back on? Yeah. Yeah. I can I love have you to. back on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, feel free to reach out anybody and I'll try to gear you to the right person or where to find some resources. Um, we are you know, based here, um, this show myself, I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, but we have viewers all over the country, all over the world, mm -hmm. and there is help. You just might have to yep. do a little digging to find it. Mm -hmm. Certainly Angela doesn't mind helping you. I don't mind helping you. So you can comment below. You can find me. Um, DM me, Gina Marie FM at gmail.com. Um, this is a journey of people who live life with the spectrum. And I'm not an expert and I'm not a doctor, but I am a mom. And I love the fact that there are so many wonderful people willing to help people on the spectrum, willing to go the extra mile like you, Angela. And um, I so thank you for being of on the course. show. Of course. I'm glad. Thank I'm you, really thank thankful you, thank you. that you're doing this. I know it's so wonderful. And I love the fact that people are commenting and people are sharing and people are, yeah. are throwing it out there. Like, Hey, uh, have you ever thought about having this person on this person? So it's only going to get bigger and better from here. Yeah. And I'm bringing you back girl. Come on, <laughs> come on, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Till next time, everyone, we live life with the spectrum again, comment, like share. And remember, you can always DM me, reach out to me via email and uh, till next time. See ya. Thanks.